All right, we're looking at 11.3. Uh, a couple things on 11.3, and, and 11.3 tends to be one of the harder lessons here, probably the hardest lesson that we have left uh, of the year in Chapter 11. Um, and not so much for the first part. First part is not bad, but once we get into the regular polygon, that's where it starts to get a little harder. Um, so let's let's get into it. First of all, we're finding the areas of rhombuses and kites. Uh, you know, you could break it into a bunch of little triangles and do that, um, but it's a whole lot easier if we just use this formula right here. And that formula for the area is one half diagonal one times diagonal two. Um, so that's what we're what we're looking at. One half diagonal one times diagonal two. Pretty straightforward there. Uh, in terms of the formula, but you got to know the diagonals. It doesn't matter which one's one and two, but you got to know the two of them. Um, so for a kite, right, diagonal one, diagonal two, you find those two and we make it happen there. Um, right, it's pretty straightforward, one half, six times eight. Just what you can't do is you can't take half of both of those numbers. Like if you're going to do one half, eight times six, you can't do four times three. That doesn't work. So you could take half of one of them. We could do four times six, or we could do eight times three, right? Or multiply the eight times the six and then by half, that's fine. Um, but you can't divide both of them by two and then multiply, that's not gonna work, okay? So pretty straightforward there. The other cool thing about this is since a square is a rhombus, you can also use this on a square. Uh, and this comes in handy anytime we're looking at a, a, a square and a maybe a coordinate plane when it's, more like a diamond, right? It's more up and down here. If we don't want to use distance formula to find this length, right? If we don't want to find that length using distance formula, then use this formula, one half diagonal, one times diagonal two. If we can just simply count straight across and count straight up and down, that's a nice easy way to find the area of that square without having to use distance formula. So that's the thing that the book doesn't point out, but I find is pretty cool about that. All right, so let's get into regular polygons. And we've talked about regular polygons before. Regular polygons are um, shapes, right? Polygons that have uh, all sides being the same length and all the angles are being the same. That's what a regular polygon is. So we've got the center of a regular polygon, which of course is just the center letter, the middle letter, uh, the middle point of that and you see it there uh, center P and then we also have uh, other parts of this that we need to know and, and you see all the vocab words on here this is an important thing to be writing down in notes and, and, and being aware of um, we've got the radius and the radius just like radius of a circle it's gonna be from the center to the outside but specifically it's gonna be from the center to um, one of the vertices of that regular polygon. And I know they have it drawn in a circle here, and, and I know that's that's how they like to, to show it here. But even if we had, let's say, um, let's say we had, oh, even if we had it like this, where it's it's a hexagon, it's the same shape, but just know that the, the radius is from the center to any one of the vertices. Basically, the spokes of the wheel is what we're looking at. So those spokes of the wheel, that's uh, like a bicycle, right? That's the radius. The, the, the thing that really gets us here in this new thing is apothem, the apothem of it. And I say it every year in class, and um, then people get distracted all the time because that's all they can hear. But... Saying apothem is like you're trying to say uh, opossum with uh, holding your tongue or sticking your tongue out, apothem. Uh, but it's the apothem of a regular polygon is from the center, but it's not to the vertice anymore, right? It's not to the vertice. That was the radius, right? So it's not to the vertice. It's to the center of the side. So it's the distance. The apothem is the distance from the center of the polygon to the side of the polygon. And whenever we measure the distance from a point to a side, we know that it has to be perpendicular there. So this right here is the apothem, and, and we label that with a little a for apothem. 
that's going to be very important when we're going to do our, our calculations here. Okay, so we've got those. Uh, the central angle, central angle of a regular polygon is the angle formed with two radii. So this would be a central angle, right? This would be a central angle. So what we know, since it's a regular polygon, since it's a regular polygon, we know that all of those central angles have to be the same because all the side lengths are going to be the same. All the angle measures are going to be the same. Everything's going to be the same here. So if I am looking for this angle, what I know is that all the way around the center is 360 degrees. So if it's 360 all the way around and I have one sixth of that because I'm looking at one sixth of it because I'm going to one side of the six. So I can do 360 divided by six. 360 divided by six tells me that that central angle is 60 degrees. Um, so that's, that's one of the first things that we're going to work on is trying to find those central angles and trying to find those angles that we can, we can figure out. And then once we're good finding those angles, then we move on to finding the area of the regular polygon, which is where uh, kind of the trickier part comes in. All right, so let's, let's move on here. Let's see what else we've got. So now we're talking about finding the different angles, different angle measures here. So we've got a regular pentagon now. Pentagon, of course, five sides. You see the apothem drawn in. That's FG. That's your apothem. Okay, they're not asking about that right now. You've got radii, FA, FB. Those are the radii. Wow, that was messy. Uh, but those were the radii. And now we're looking for angle measures. We're looking for AFB. So they're looking for that central angle first. So you can see it down at the bottom, 360 divided by five, there's five sides. So 360 divided by five is 72. So that's a 72 degree central angle. So that means that angle is 72, that angle is gonna be 72, 72, 72, right? All five are gonna be 72. Um, so that's, that's a pretty easy way to find that central angle. Now we're looking for instead of the AFB, which is the central angle, we're looking for AFG. Well, AFG right here, this angle, that is always going to be half of that central angle. Okay, take that central angle divided by two. So since it was 72 degrees for the central angle, that means this angle is gonna be 36 degrees. Okay, it's always half of that central angle because you're drawing that perpendicular line in, everything's congruent, both sides are congruent. That is going to be a bisected angle, so it's gonna be 36 there. And then the other one they're asking for is angle GAF. Well, GAF, if you look at this triangle now, we've got a 90 degree angle there, right? A 90 degree angle, we've got a 36 degree angle. So triangle sum theorem, we can get this one, which is gonna end up being 54 degrees for that last one. Okay, we gotta be able to find the angle measures that they're asking for here. Your central angle, cut it in half, we get that half angle here. That half angle is very important. Um, that's how we're going to be able to do a lot of the calculations, how we're going to be able to find the apothem, how we're going to be able to find the radius, all of that stuff. So that's what we're, what we got to be able to do first. All right. Um, a square is a regular polygon. Keep, you know, don't forget about that. So Q, uh, QP here is the apothem. XP is the radius. I can take, uh, my central angle is 90 degrees because it's 360 divided by four. I cut that 90 in half, I've got a 45 degree angle here, right? That's the sort of stuff that we gotta be able to do. All right, so now let's look at finding area and I'm not gonna look it up there, I'm gonna jump straight to this. Okay, here's our formula. Um, and they both mean the same thing. I typically go with the one on the left here. The area is equal to one half apothem times perimeter. Now. I've said for a year and a half, two years now, that you got to be careful of your letters. So if it's capital, keep it capital. If it's lowercase, keep it lowercase. And this is one reason why, right? We've got a capital A, we got a lowercase a in the same formula. Capital A is area, lowercase a is the apothem. So what we're looking at, we're looking at area is equal to one half times the apothem times the perimeter. Okay, and when we talk about perimeter, we're talking about the perimeter of the entire thing. Now, if we look on the right side here, this NS instead of P, right? That's taking the place of P. NS is just saying it's an N-GAN, 
So there's n number of sides and each side is s. So basically ns is just getting us that perimeter. Okay, this in case we're unsure of how to find that perimeter, that's how we're doing it. But we're going to concentrate on one half apophthalm perimeter as we go forward. All right, so let's take a look at a problem here. We've got a regular nonagon with a radius of four units. We want to find the area. Okay, there's a lot that goes into this problem right here. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point some stuff out. I'm going to talk through it, and then I'm going to show you the work that the book does. Um, the first thing that we got to do, and, and I'm just going to I'm going to zoom in on this just because we're, we're dealing just with this and, and it's going to be great to draw on. We want the area of this. We know the radius is four. The radius doesn't do anything for us in terms of our formula. Remember, our formula is one half apothem times perimeter. So I need the apothem and I need the perimeter. I don't have the apothem here. The apothem is LM. Right? That's what I'm looking for is that apothem. So every time we do a problem like this, we're going to concentrate on one of these triangles, one of the small triangles. And you know, I'm going to draw in my own here. I'm going to draw in, it's always a radius and an apothem to here. And we know that that's a right angle. I just want to get this. It's the same exact thing. I'm just drawing it in a different location. Basically, just so it's straight up and down. I like that better. Anyway. Um, so we're looking for that apothem because we need that for our formula. Um, what we do know is we can find the central angle. The central angle, since there are nine sides as a nonagon, our central angle is going to be 360 divided by 9, which tells me that's a 40 degree angle. That's the central angle. So that's not this angle here, right? It's the central angle. It's this angle, the whole big thing is going to be 40. So if we cut that in half, that means that we're going to have a 20 degree angle. So it's a 20 degree angle there. Well, now this is where trig comes in. This is why I like this so much and why I like trig so much is because you can start using that stuff to solve other parts. So if we look, we've got that 20 degree angle, right? We've got that 20 degree angle. According to that angle, I've got the adjacent side, which is my apothem, and I've got the hypoth hypotenuse hypotenuse and adjacent that's cosine so what I'm looking at is cosine of 20 is going to be equal to a over 4 so I multiply it over so 4 cosine 20 that is my apothem right so if I go up here I've got 1 half times 4 cosine 20 and now I got to find the perimeter Right? So I found that apothem by setting up a trig, uh, trig function using cosine in this case. Now I need to find the, uh, the perimeter. To find the perimeter, I need to know the side length. Because if I can find the whole side length, I can multiply that by 9 and get the perimeter. Well, what I can do is find, let's call this x, find this half right here, again, by using trig. So if I know that the radius is 4, that's the hypotenuse, and I know x is what I'm looking for now, that's the opposite, now I'm using sine. So I'm using sine of 20 is going to be equal to x over 4. So 4 sine 20 is going to give me that x. Now that x, that is half of one side. That's half of one side, right? So if I want that whole side, I want that whole side out here, it's going to be double that. So if I double that, and I make that 2 times 4 sine 20, right? That's going to give me that whole side. Well, that's one side. I need 9 of them. So I'm going to take that times 9. This right here is going to give me that whole perimeter. Basically, that's saying there's 18 of those half portions, 18 x portions that I need to have. It's a little confusing when you, when you look at it. Um, so, I, but I would take for the perimeter, I would use exact numbers, 18 times four sine 20. That's my, my equation right there for the area of this. I would type that entire thing right into the calculator. Just make sure you're closing parentheses around that 20. I would type that entire thing right in the calculator 
to get that area. Okay, so I kind of wrote it out for you. Uh, let's take a look now at what the book does here. They talk about central angle being 40 degrees, 360 divided by 9. We did that. Cut that in half. We get the 20. All right, they're forming that triangle. And now they're trying to find the apothem and this MK. So they got 4 sine 20 for MK. They got 4 cosine 20 for LM, which is the apothem. So now you can see it here. They type that whole thing in. Now, one thing that they did slightly different, we talked about the 4 sine 20 um, being half of the side length, and then they times it by 2, and they simplified that to 8 sine 20. So that's why theirs looks slightly different instead of an 18 times 2 sine 20, or, or 18 times 4 sine 20, sorry, they have 9 times 8 sine 20. It's the same thing, right? It means the same thing. But you see, they have the same equation listed there. Okay, so we've got that. So take a look at that. Look over it. I'm sure the 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 computer or the the online book has a a video for you that you can do. Uh, but that's really what we're looking at. Is, is you're going to have to form that triangle. You're going to have to do something to find that apothem to find that perimeter that you need. Like if we are doing this problem, they give us that radius. Let's form that triangle. Okay, we form that triangle. There are eight sides here. This is an octagon. This is an octagon, so it's 360 divided by 8 would give us 72, which means that this is a 36 degree angle in there. If that's a 36 degree angle and I want to find the apothem, that's cosine. That's cosine of 36 is equal to a over 19.6 so we've got 19 cosine 36 is that apothem I don't have to do the sine one because I know the side length is 15 so I can just do 15 times 8 to get that perimeter so I got 15 times 8 for the perimeter I times that by cosine or 19.6 cosine 36 and times it by one half and that would give us that answer Right? And you're going to see it here. It's that same sort of thing. Um, they do a little bit more. They use uh, Pythagorean theorem instead of, of cosine. You can do that. I think cosine's easier, but you could do that as well. Um, one thing that I want to point out, and, and that's the end of this, and, and I know some of you might be confused, and that's fine. Look at the videos online. Rewatch this. Do whatever you have to do. One thing I want to point out um, the, the best shapes for this, the best shapes are going to be hexagons, okay? And hexagons, if we, oh, let me draw here. Hexagons, if we're dealing with hexagons, the reason why these are the best is because when we go to create this triangle, 360 divided by 6 gives me a 60 degree central angle. Well, you cut that in half, I got 30. So now what I'm looking at, I'm looking at a 30, 60, 90 triangle, which means we can use those shortcuts. So if I know that, let's say this is uh, a side length of 6. Side length of 6 means half of it is 3. Well, right away, I know my apothem is going to be 3 root 3 because I know that shortcut. So then the area of this would be 1 half times apothem, 3 root 3, times the perimeter, which is 6 times 6 or 36. I would just have to multiply that together. That would give me the area of that. So hexagons are great here. That is a terrible hexagon, by the way, but we'll deal with it. Um, hexagons are great, but if it's not, then you just got to know that angle measure. Use your sine, your cosine to figure it out. So we're using that trig stuff. Try it this week. Try it and then come ask questions uh, when you need to. All right, there you go. Hopefully that works for you on 11.3. Uh,